Good afternoon, everybody. This is Barb Pello, Group Director from InfoTrends, and I'm delighted that you could join us for our webinar titled Augmented Reality, Making Print Interactive, sponsored by Canon Solutions America. Um, this topic of augmented reality is an exciting topic in today's market, and we're going to do um, an interesting webinar today that focuses, first of all, on spending a few minutes on the augmented reality opportunity, but then I'm joined by Martin Lenz Fitzgerald, who's the co-founder and U.S. general manager for a company called Layer. Layer actually produces augmented reality software tools, and what Martin's going to be doing is sharing with you how service providers can go about the implementation process of augmented reality. We're then joined by Alan Snyder, and Alan's the general manager of, of Fry Communications. And Alan's going to talk to you about what Fry is actually doing relative to implementation on the augmented reality side of things. Um, for today, I'd like to give you a few tips to make sure that you enjoy the webinar. First of all, if you're having any level of technical difficulties, you can let us know by using the Q&A box, or you can troubleshoot by clicking the Help widget. If you've got questions, we'll be taking them throughout the webinar, so I suggest that you key them in while they're fresh in your mind, and I'll ask them while that speaker is, in fact, actually talking. Uh, make sure you disable those pop-up blockers, and if you want to see what the console can do, click on the Tips for Attendees widget for a complete rundown. Now, with that as a backdrop, I'm going to open the webinar with a brief discussion of the augmented reality opportunity. Martin will share with you how to implement augmented reality. You're going to get a service provider perspective from Alan. We'll talk about the bottom line and open it again for any questions and answers that we didn't get to during the webinar. Now, the first thing is what is augmented reality? Well, we've heard a lot about it over the last several years, and it's really a live, direct, or indirect view of a physical, real-world environment whose elements are, in fact, augmented by computer-generated sensory input, including sound, video, graphics, or GPS data. The view of reality is actually modified by a computer, and what happens is it enhances one's perception of reality. It might be sports scores or lines on a football field during, the, during a game. With the help of augmented reality technology, augmented reality technology, the information about the surrounding real world of the user becomes interactive. And what we're seeing when we look at today's market is that, well, it, was, it is somewhat of a niche opportunity. It's expected to grow at a tremendous rate over the past few years, the next few years, as products from companies like Google and Samsung and Qualcomm are launched. AR application and service providers are going to enjoy significant growth with a build-out of 4G networks and business models that involve ASP-based service delivery via the cloud-based development, deployment, and operation. In fact, developer investment in augmented reality applications will total $670 million U.S. million this year, according to forecasts by ABI Research. That amount is expected to exceed $2.5 by 2018 as augmented reality becomes part of everyday experiences for consumers. Now, InfoTrends recently did a consumer media trends survey, and we asked people if they were familiar with the concept of augmented reality. 56.8% said that they were, 35% said they weren't. But that's a pretty big percentage when you look at consumer familiarity with uh, an emerging technology. We also asked them how they interacted with it, and I was at a friend's house over the weekend, and she didn't understand the terminology, but she has a five-year-old, and the five-year-old was playing with her cell phone in a, an augmented reality game on the back of a cereal box. And so the way that we're seeing it used is for things like that, fun and entertainment, playing a game, finding a location or destination, or accessing information, additional information. And we're seeing industry leaders get in the game. They're industry leaders like Fry. Quad Graphics has an app that's augmented reality in nature. And obviously, Layer, you'll hear about today in terms of how they're getting in the game. But it's not just the big players. It's smaller players that are actually beginning to participate. And I wanted to give you a couple of what I categorize as fun examples. The first one is Band-Aids. 
Band-Aid turns a boo-boo into a Muppet show for little kids. And basically what they've done is they've embedded augmented reality into a Band-Aid so that when your son or daughter gets that boo-boo, you can sit down and entertain them with the Muppets while you're patching them up. In Australia, there's a college named Simpson, Simpson College. What they did is they used augmented reality to recruit new students. They built out a banner that they placed in a mall, and what happened was, as I pointed my cell phone at that augmented reality sign, I would get information about the university, and it helped them actually recruit new students. The marketing director actually said that the value of this is that he could continually change the messaging linked to that augmented reality application and keep the content fresh. Now, there's another great example, uh, and it's with BMW, and BMW is using it to enhance customer service. And what happens is the mechanic actually wears what they call augmented reality glasses, and they'll receive additional three-dimensional information on the engine that they're repairing. For example, it might help him diagnose and solve the fault. And what he basically can see is virtually animated components, the tools to be used, and here's instruction on each of the working steps through headphones that are integrated into a pair of goggles that he's wearing. And so when you look at augmented reality, we see it as touching every facet of life, and it's taking hold in very high-value applications, and in some instances, not just gimmicky marketing materials. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to Martin, and Martin's going to share with you what I categorize as an overview of Augmented Reality 101. Take it away, Martin. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Augmented Reality 101, basically continuation of what you just saw. And in short, what you'll end up is that you'll know how to get additional revenue as well as more reader engagement with augmented reality. I'll talk about uh, just first who am I as well as who my company is. I'll give a history also of augmented reality, show you how the tools work, the business model that you can use, as well as examples, learnings that we've had with other thousands of users, as well as a little bit of a look into the future, what we can expect. Uh, starting about me, well, this is me. I'm Martin Lentz Fitzgerald. Like uh, Barb said, I'm the uh, founder and general manager here in the U.S. About Layer, so we're the world's largest platform of mobile augmented reality and what we call interactive print. We have 33 million downloads globally, 7 million here in the U.S. of our app, and over 50,000 marketeers, publishers, printers registered on our creation tool. The company is 40 people based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, as well as here in the U.S. and New York, where I currently am. Our clients include basically all large U.S. publishers uh, as well as printers. And, uh, yeah, you'll see them uh, come by uh, when we do the examples. So let's start with the history. So in 1968, here in the U.S., even Sutherland created the first augmented reality setup. You can see uh, here on the left uh, this, this contraption, literally, of, of where uh, the big cross tracks his head, and whenever he turns, he would see a cube uh, uh, in the air in front of him, and these big capital grade tubes tied to his head would show these. So he's the first guy who really came up with it and, and created a first real experience. He didn't call it augmented reality yet. That came next in 1992 because it was stayed in the lab uh, environment, in R&D environment. And in 1992 at Boeing, Tom Claudel and David Mitzel, they were uh, trying to make sure that to, to, to do the wiring right to, in the planes. As you know, there's a lot of, lots of wiring going on. It's almost like, uh, um, uh, like you braid it through there. So uh, what they did is like instead of looking left uh, at, at the manual and then straight ahead at the, how to break this, they put actually through augmented reality, they would show, now put the red one over the blue one, et cetera, et cetera. And they coined the term augmented reality for the first time. Uh, I think most of you uh, saw Terminator in 1984, and this was actually the first time that in a mass market everybody got a glimpse of what augmented reality could mean. When Arnold Schwarzenegger looked around, he recognized, as he was a robot, of course, he could do this. And he recognized what kind of motorcycle was there, that the female waitress was not a threat and did not have to be killed, et cetera, et cetera. But this really shows well what augmented reality is, like Barb explained, the combination of reality and digital information. 
Now, in 2011, for the first time then, the mobile phone that you could get in the market was able to see. That means that it can compute the, and recognize images that it saw. And this is when Layer also started working with this. And what we realized is that print actually has the best infrastructure to do this because print is read at home, and at home you have Wi-Fi, so there's always a connection to the cloud. So you can do the recognition process as well as download all the videos. Next to that, print is always about desire. You want to have those books that you read about in the magazine. Print is also visually rich so the computer can recognize it. And most people take actually their time to read their favorite magazine. There's an established relationship, and they have no distractions when they go for it. So this is an ideal time to ask users, like, hey, do you like these boots? Well, please pull out your phone, download the app, and point it up at the page to view more about those boots or view the video or even buy it straight off of there. And so what we realized when we started doing this is that, wow, this is indeed a great application. We did some trials. Here you see a Frame magazine, an international design magazine, where you, yeah, people were, had a whole page to understand how to use the software. And when they held it over the cover in other pages, they would see videos or even were able to buy things. One of the things that we added is that we made it really easy to do. And we call that the layer creator, which is uh, right now very uh, favorable within publishers and printers because we know that there's not a lot of time, let alone money, to do new things because a lot of new things have been done over the last years. Now, going into tools and business models, so how is it really earning its lasting place in the value chain? Well, let's start with tools. First off, you have image recognition. And image recognition means that the computer, the phone, recognizes a unique image. So this is basically here on the left, you see an image, and uh, the yellow crosses are what the computer sees. And they see, yeah, whatever the little hook, yeah, the unique feature. So no QR code is needed or special uh, uh, printing technology like you, like you may have heard otherwise. Um, so the image recognition, once that has happened, you can go straight to the augmented reality, and that is how uh, yeah, the technology with which the video or the button or anything else is placed on top of the printed matter. Then, of course, you have the mobile app. Uh, the layer app is uh, downloaded for free on iOS and Android. Uh, with ours, actually, you can also do QR code scanner uh, scanning as well as see 3D or uh, uh, things come alive on top of the page. We also do it custom branded or an SDK. So I got a quick question order, before you, Mark, before you move on. Yeah. Somebody asked the question, what is the difference between augmented reality and a QR code? A QR code is an experience which is not editable afterwards. It's just basically a link that the computer recognizes based on that black and white code. So it goes straight to a web page or straight to the video. In augmented reality, you can have all kinds of experiences that you can see augmented on top of the page, for instance. And so there's no augmented reality in QR. And in the way you can see augmented reality is literally the difference between black and white and color TVs. Thanks, Martin. So in order to create augmented reality, uh, people, and, and basically all vendors now have this, we have an easy drag and drop online creation tool. On the left, you see the pages that are uploaded. In this case, it's one page from Wired, the cover. In the middle, you see the one that you're editing. In this case, it is the cover, like I said. You see there are some blue buttons on there. And on the right, you can see all the types of buttons and interactions you can drag and drop onto the page. And the process is literally, you drag and drop it on the page, you slice it, you size it, you add the link to, to the site that it has to go to or the video it has to pick up, press save, press publish, and you're done. So within a minute, you can have your page, your poster, your packaging made interactive. And that is really unique, and, and I think this is really the opportunity for everybody because now it is so easy. The things that you can do on top of the page are, are pretty straightforward. You can link to a website. You can have a call me now button. So that means when that button is clicked, it calls, uses the, the phone function to call. You can buy, so go straight to a web shop. You can open the email app and mail somebody right away. You can download another app, show a slideshow, a video. The videos, by the way, are the most uh, used features uh, that we offer. 
Uh, you can listen to music. Uh, you can also create an HTML experience that is more for advanced usage. You can show uh, a hashtag list of who is or, or yeah, what people are twittering about. So say you're an event, then you can show what people now are tweeting about your event. And of course, like, tweet, follow, and, and pin uh, uh, actions. What you saw were the standard buttons that we provide, and, and of course, the actions that uh, link to it. Uh, all these buttons, of course, are best used when they fit with your printed design. So we always tell people, please use your own design and use the custom button option that we have and that anybody has. So it really matches up with the printed matter that you're offering. Um, like I said, we also have HTML widgets, and this is really an easy way because most people have HTML knowledge within their company. And in a way, it's like an iframe rendered on top of the page. So through this, you can create a poll on top of the page or a live score uh, listing of the game that you're writing about, the live weather information, or even a shopping widget showing how full your car, uh, cart is uh, if you're a catalog. And these things I call a high experience with a low investment using these HTML widgets because that is basic knowledge. And if you compare that to 3D, which is also possible, and that is really cool for immersive and advanced experience, and even though it's easy to add to the tool, it's hard to cre uh, create and design a 3D experience. So we advise our people to really always, or our customers, to really think hard if a 3D experience will really be refitting to their objective. And maybe not just a simple web link or an HTML experience would do the job. Next to uh, what you just saw, we also offer uh, enterprise integration solutions. So this is basically the next generation of automated, augmented reality. And imagine if you're using Woodlink, for instance, we just offer, uh, they just uh, shared their first demo plugin using uh, our technology where automatically during the creation in Woodwing of your publication, you can add augmented reality to it. So when you save your PDF, your pages are basically aligned already with interactions. Next to that, you have, can have uh, connections on an enterprise level, for instance, the uh, European Amazon DOL. They automatically update their covers, uh, 25,000 top covers of books, uh, and magazines as well as, or sorry, not magazines, but uh, DVDs and Blu-rays. And when you scan it, you can see their pricing and you can buy that book that you see at your friends who he is talking about. And you can buy it straight off the cover. Again, this is an advanced integration, but this is also the future where all things automatically will be enhanced. And that I really believe, I mean, every surfing, surface in the future will be like that. Martin, before you move yeah. on, I got a couple quick questions for you. Sure. Um, the first one is, it, it, could you explain to the audience how the image is actually recognized by the cell phone? And I realize it's an interplay between software and, and the production, but could mm -hmm. you explain how that image gets recognized? Right. Let me show you that slide, which is here. Um, so in a way, if you look at a, an image, um, uh, just right now, everybody, if you look at your screen, you see unique features. If you actually squint, you see kind of like how the mobile phone is seeing it uh, uh, with our software. And these features are recorded. I, here in this slide, you can kind of see rep representation of that in the yellow uh, crosses. This is what we save as a data file. We call this the image fingerprint. And when you scan an image, this uh, data file of the fingerprint is what we send to the cloud. It's then matched up with the original and says, like, hey, this is Layered Magazine. Oh, you need this video then on top of it on this location. So this is, in short, how it works. It recognizes the unique visual features and has a, rep yeah, a simple version of that that it sends over to the cloud to do uh, its smart stuff with. Okay, now then the next question I've got, there's a couple back-to-back -back on how this works. So uh -huh. w one of the comments you made was that you said no special effects need to be printed to accomplish augmented reality. And so mm -hmm. it, once your tool processes the image, then can it be printed digitally as well as offset? It can print it any type of, of uh, you can literally almost probably, if you can draw really well, you can also use that with a pencil. It sees black and white, so it doesn't matter what kind of color it is. Glossy, so if it's very glossy and you would see it in, in, in a sunshine, like I was this weekend in Miami, it might not really work perfectly, but those are extreme situations. In general, it's optimized to work under various conditions 
uh, and recognize the image. And again, it doesn't matter what type of printing is used. Okay, and one, one last question, then I'll let you move on. How is, how is video interlaced over the real image um, the viewer sees on their phone, and how do you inter integrate video with it? So video is actually, like I said, the most popular to use. And to do augmented reality video, meaning video that is like stuck onto the page, this is done by uh, hosting an MP4 formatted video. So it's www.company.com slash video.mp4. So you need to have that ability to create the video as well as host it. And then in our system, you just say, here is the video, and you paste that link in there in the video uh, button that we have, as well as add the little starter uh, image that you're used to, for instance, when you see YouTube. With, uh, we add the triangle to it, by the way. And then when it's scanned, it will say, hey, wait a minute. So on this cover, there should be this video. This video is at www.company.com slash video.mp4. So I'll load it and show it within augmented reality. And this latest part, this in augmented reality part, is how we programmed it to play. And that is a unique feature uh, of augmented reality, which, of course, also does the wow effect for most people. Okay. Thanks, Martin. You're welcome. Uh, continuing on, so let's talk about business models here. So how does this add to people's business? Let's start with magazines and newspapers. Like I said, this is where we really originally saw the first usage and the first lasting place of augmented reality and other people's value chain. So for readers of magazines and newspapers, they really are more engaged with the product. So that means that they can lengthen uh, their usage of, uh, of their reading of that, that product. And they do this, of course, through video, through the web links, the slideshows, the polls, the click to email, the like buttons, anything that the editors uh, uh, or even the advertisers added to those pages uh, with the magazine or with the newspaper. And they're basically an extra channel that's being added to this newspaper. That's how I personally imagine it. So you have a magazine of 100 pages. You have basically 20 extra pages of experience in this new digital augmented reality channel. And this is, of course, where the real hardcore values kicks in, and that is additional ad revenue. Because existing ads or it can be upsold, like, hey, for X amount of dollars, we will add a video on there or a Buy Me Now button. So this is an extra channel. Basically, like a TV show would add, or a TV channel or a network would add an extra channel. Now the newspaper and the magazine automatically, on top of their print, have an extra interactive channel, which is unique. And we've seen that the upselling of uh, existing ads is really working well. I have more information on this later. And lastly, I, this is personally my belief that, that will make this a lasting thing within magazines and newspapers. And that is that you can have yes, shopping, the, the, the magazine can be turned into a shopping cart, a shop point of sales for uh, the magazine, as well as the retailers, who, of course, are always looking for these opportunities. Imagine Oprah's Christmas list uh, coming December. Uh, that she recommends, made interactive, they work together, say, with, with Target or any other one, she can have a sh profit share with them where, or rep share with them. So anybody who then shops through that page, through her uh, recommended products, they will, of course, buy this product, and both the retailer, Target in this example, as well as Oprah, will be a winner because they will uh, uh, earn the extra money. And actually, the consumer, I personally believe, will be happier because for them, it's a service. They don't have to get up to walk to the computer and find that product. They don't have to go out to the store. They can shop straight from their, uh, from their uh, magazine. So commerce really, I think, will be the clincher for this uh, market. But it's also more complex because you need to work together with a whole other industry that you're not used to. But do expect first uh, examples of this coming soon. And we already had some of these. Uh, and here's just a quick case on how local newspapers can do this. So local newspapers say uh, you're a large company, you have 50,000 uh, or 500,000 ads uh, a year that you sell. 25% of that you believe you can upsell with augmented reality. So that uh, total number of interactive ads are 125,000. Uh, you upsell them for $100 each. This way you can make $12.5 million. Say you need, uh, you buy layer page credits for this. This is how we monetize it. So how you pay us $12 for each of those pages made interactive. So the cost will be $1.5 million. That still leaves you $11 million. 
And Glacier Media in Canada actually just announced that they will be doing 7.5 million this year in this manner. So really, it's, it's uh, working well. Uh, printers and agencies. Uh, so this is another uh, way to earn extra money. Printers and agencies, first off, they can have provide this service using our tools or any of our industry's tools and provide extra services to their uh, uh, customers. And basically, the hours that you do designing the experience, the production you do producing the experience, as well as maintaining it. And of course, you create all the value I discussed earlier for their customers, for the magazines, the newspapers, or even the brands that you are working with. Next to that, you also have a retention value because the extra services around the PDF that you already will, will get as a printer is what, of course, uh, where you provide that extra service on. So you really make sure that you have a lot of extras for them. And by doing this now, you'll be probably one of the first, so you'll position yourself or get an extra advantage uh, by being innovative. As a brand, of course, just think about packaging. You have an additional communication channel where you can just do more than, than sell, uh, 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 well, like the other example with the, uh, uh, the cereal in the morning. You can have a whole interaction uh, experience that people will be entertained by, again. Also, you will have additional sales uh, revenues. Imagine just ordering extra of that product by scanning the, the packaging. And again, the innovation, people will really perceive you as being modern by using this technology. So let's go to some examples. Uh, Glacier Media Group, uh, is what I talked about earlier here. So they had started with 12 newspapers at the beginning of the year. In two weeks, they created, uh, trained more than 100 people and for them, it is so successful now, they are expanding to all their newspapers. And one of the key things they did is they really put sales first, so the people were selling the ads right away. The salespeople had it integrated into their bonus scheme. And together, of course, with, with the editors doing the editorial enhancement, they really now have a rich newspaper, and they have a lot of these local newspapers in Canada. And for them, it is proving to be uh, profitable. And to just give you an example, for instance, here, this A&W ad, you scan it, you can see, uh, when you scan it, you see the YouTube video of uh, A&W, uh, the local A&W, as well as your link to their uh, extra uh, mobile website where you can get extra information. Very simple upsell for just $99 in their case, uh, Canadian dollars, but it works, like I said, really well for them. Another example here for a wine and dine uh, a bistro, or wine boost bistro ad, you can go through a slideshow of all the menu items uh, that they have. You can book a table by clicking on it, or you can go to the YouTube channel or Facebook channel or Twitter channel. Really easy, like I said, to book a table. I think that, again, is really provide that action. Another example here of a car ad. You can't really see a car because it may be too small. But in short, all the cars have videos on them, 360 tours of them, so you can really look at the car before you go uh, and have an appointment. And you can book the appointment or book a test drive by just clicking the button below when you scan this ad. Another example here is Food Supply and Washington Post. Uh, Washington Post, this was actually one of the biggest inserts lately here in the East Coast. And Food Supply had a brochure, and then you scan the brochure, you can see all those Buy Now buttons. That's what showed up. And this is how they generated extra revenue. Parents uh, from Meredith, so the parents group has several uh, ma uh, magazines. They are now doing augmented reality, doing more reader engagement, and, and just a simple one, just simple slideshows that they provide on top of their articles to really explain and show more about what they're talking about. Dwell Magazine worked together with online retailer Aha Life, Aha Life, and they created a commerce example. So every product in this catalog was scannable, and you could buy it straight off the mobile site. They actually sold a $3,500 rug through this uh, setup. Really impressive. So what are the insights? What are the learnings that we got from uh, the field? Well, overall, once you have a serious execution in a magazine or a newspaper, and people are scanning you, then over 40% will click your interactive buttons. And this is so much more than uh, compared to what people click in banners. Really interesting. A higher success rate, uh, the, the salespeople get when they sell uh, uh, layer uh, enhanced ads or augmented ads compared to online or mobile ads. People will say, or advertisers quicker say yes to an enhanced ad than any other ad. 
And 90% of advertisers who saw a live demo on their own content, so their old ad, purchased an enhanced ad. So really, again, very, very clear metrics that we're getting. Also, and specifically this was for Glacier Media, they didn't hire anybody new for this work. This publisher did everything with the existing people. One other really practical thing is it is important to give clear instructions and enhanced uh, editorial uh, to the readers. I mean, you really need to tell them about this new channel. In a way, tell them about the new shop that you opened so that they will go there and enjoy themselves, this new experience. And here's just an example of, of how you can uh, yeah, do the call to actions. We, we provide them. You can design your own, whatever you want. If you have your own branded app, you can, of course, create your own branded one. Ink Magazine, for instance, uses Layer. We're really happy with that. Uh, but, for instance, parents doesn't. They have something called Mom Plus, their own app, and they're doing really well with that. They do instructions. They do reader contests, promotional ads, as well as, like I said, editorial enhanced content. So looking ahead, what's next? Uh, of course, you've heard about Google Glass. Well, Google Glass is, is, of course, a very interesting thing. It's not augmented reality yet. It's just a little screen that you see on the top right of your vision. So that is not what we do right now. It's just like putting your phone there. So, yes, it's very interesting, and we're really happy that, that Google Glass or Google is investing in this really new innovation. But we, right now, in augmented reality, are focusing on the 1 billion smartphones that are sold this year, for instance because that's the people, that's the audience that we have. And basically, one billion people have the TV that we can broadcast to. And that is, of course, what we find interesting. And in short, we say that everybody is ready for it. The people are ready with one billion smartphones. The industry is ready. We're the leader with 33 million downloads of 50,000 creators. Overall, there's so many more. And the business is ready. The models are ready. It's clear that you can upsell ads from be at $99 or $3,099. So we, in short, say, people, if you believe this, and of course, that's, that's where you need to buy it in, but just do it, just start it, it's very easy to do. And one of the personal, uh, yeah, what I really like being the founder, of course, too, is, is this innovation of augmented reality is really something that does not disrupt. Normally, uh, yeah, I like to say that not all, all innovation has to disrupt. It can and should strengthen what exists already. So the printed product here is strengthened. It's not broken down. It's not, in a way, what people are saying about web or mobile or iPad edition. No, we really need that printed product with this technology, and we strengthen it. And that, we believe, is what really will make this powerful. So that was my talk, and uh, I hope you have some good questions later. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Martin. What I'm going to do is, and there's a number of questions, and by the way, if we don't get to all of them, everybody, we will get back to you. But what I wanted to let, give you a perspective on is let you hear from Alan Snyder and what they're doing at Fry Communications so you get a PSP perspective or a service provider spec perspective of what's going on in the market. So I'm going to turn it over to Alan. We should have a few minutes at the back end for Q&A. Thanks a bunch. Alan, take it away. Thank you, Barb, and welcome, everybody. Thank you for taking the time today. Um, I think at Fire Communications, we look at all the new technologies uh, as they emerge. Uh, fundamentally, we're a printer. Um, we're a privately held communications company uh, founded back in 1934 by Henry Fry's parents, who's the current owner. Um, we answer to our clients and not to shareholders. Um, to make a long story short, from 1934 to present, we've grown to over 1.3 million square feet. Uh, we have dozens of presses and binders and comprehensive finishing equipment and so forth. One of the key elements of the conversation today has to do with what we call the Fry Family Network. The Fry Family Network itself represents the digital opportunities or the complementary opportunities to both the publishing market as well as the production of uh, published products. So what it is... It, in specifically, with, we make strategic investments in technology and service companies that we recognize as being ahead of the curve or uh, better prepared for what's coming. And, you know, this is how we ended up getting into the augmented reality space. Uh, we provide publishers with services to increase their revenues and lower costs of uh, production and increased distribution to reach new customers through publishing channels. 
when we look at companies, we look for fantastic products. We look for, more importantly, uh, at companies that are interested in, in creating new products and in, in building on what they have. Uh, the, this particular space, we look at what I would call pre-media or the digital side of uh, publishing is very dynamic, and I'm sure everyone on this call is well aware of that. So we can't look at a specific product and say this is, you know, this is the product for the next five years. Instead, we look at the, te- the, the company and the management team and the technologies, and that's what we see as being what we need for the next five years. Um, some of our target markets include business-to-business consumer, uh, periodicals, catalogs, commercial and general print. Uh, 85% of our total customer base is comprised of those main areas. Luxury titles are especially growing, so depending on the audience today, you all recognize your particular market space. And personally, I think augmented reality uh, offers itself well to any of these markets. I don't think there's a, a reason why you wouldn't. Obviously, retail has a tendency to to fly up because it has that point of sale attribute to it that Martin referred to. And catalogs, uh, just like everybody else, are, are looking at ways to uh, create more uh, return on investment for their products when it comes to uh, the printed product. And a lot of the things that we do within the Fry Family Network is, you know, managing uh, digital publications and in What's really relevant here today is rich media creation, which plays into the digital media, whether it's web or digital editions or uh, custom apps or things of these nature. Uh, we can present the resources that help do more high-end creative. As Martin alluded to, things like 3D can be very complicated. Uh, I think there was a question regarding uh, video and how the, how do you get the video to to represent itself with an augmented reality? And I would have answered that that there's three key ways to present video through the layer application. One is simply to put the call to action on your printed page. Typically, it's over an image or, or at least a caption that says, you know, see the videos here or the slideshow. And when you click on it, it, you have options. You can either play that in a little frame on top of the page. You can default to the device player and have it play on the device player. Um, Or you can do what I would call interaction with the printed content. So you've probably, many of you have probably seen samples where it appears like an individual is coming out of the page and starts talking. That's using, you know, very well planned out green screen video to isolate the the subject matter. And what you're doing is you're really interacting with the presentation of the printed piece to make it appear uh, more dynamic other than just a video popping up and playing. So why augmented reality for Fry? And as I said, we're always looking at emergency emerging technologies related to printing and publishing and retail services. Uh, Anything that enhances the value proposition of a printed product, uh, we're going to be in favor of. Anything that helps enhance the opportunity for revenue growth uh, for our publishing clients, uh, we're going to have interest in. So we spend a good deal of time. We have a a great resource team that is constantly evaluating the space uh, and I'm part of that. I think I was introduced as the general manager of Fry Communications. I should probably correct that before the owner finds out. Um, I'm actually in charge of the digital production and support group, which fundamentally helps uh, our print clients and and others to uh, focus in on the digital stuff and try to bridge that. In many cases, we have customers. Their assets reside here. Uh, We can easily get those ported into uh, digital publishing channels um, for them. We have a lot of small and mid-sized publishers that may not have the internal resource for those types of things. So that's how we end up getting into this kind of play. So we're kind of like a little internal service bureau for, uh, for our communications. So the application potential, I think Martin really covered it well. Um, so there's not going to be a big surprise here. I think uh, number one is, you know, delivering bonus content in a printed piece. And Martin, as Martin stated, 
uh, the printed product really lends itself to this technology. Um, one of the other questions was the difference between the QR code and augmented reality. We've done both, um, and I think Martin explained it well. Augmented reality, you can do multiple things on a single page uh, with a single call to action, quite frankly. And in barcodes, of course, you have to uh, place one barcode for one action or take you to a web page to do multiple actions. Um, so the application potential also broadens the interaction with the printed content. As I mentioned earlier, using some more creative uh, video uh, approaches, you can really capture your audience. And I think that's one of the big keys in introducing new technologies to people, uh, particularly your con uh, constituency, is getting them to interact with whatever that technology is. That's, that's the ultimate key. And to make that as interesting and entertaining and uh, attractive as possible. Once you establish that, the opportunities then really open up. So you can recruit leads uh, and other user information, create engagement that can only be found in print using the augmented reality. And Martin, again, showed a lot of good examples of how it was being applied. And then develop the revenue streams from the advertising opportunities. On that particular note, I'm more of an advocate, and everyone has opinions, I'm only going to share mine, is I think the first obstacle or the first uh, real uh, difficulty is people look at these new technologies and they know they should try something, so they find the cheapest, easiest thing that they can do just to see what happens. And obviously, depending on what you put into it is likely what you're going to get out of it. So I think when you go to apply these technologies, and particularly augmented reality, it's worthy of discussion. It's worthy of, you know, what is our angle? What do we want to do? How do we want to get these people to recognize what's here? How do we want to get them to click it? And how do we present something that's going to make them want to do it again? Once you establish that, the upsell opportunities for advertising and so forth uh, will become uh, apparent simply on the metrics that your audience uh, generates. So I think developing rev revenue streams and advertising opportunities or in retail sales is obviously uh, one of the big uh, return on investment opportunities when using augmented reality. But if you can't capture the usage, then you're not going to achieve that. Uh, application examples, uh, Mark Martin showed a lot, but I think in the publishing space, uh, some examples that we've experienced and, and worked with uh, one simple one is a media kit. So adding some augmented reality to the media kit, maybe the publisher is uh, giving the value proposition of a particular publication uh, to the people that are going to potentially look to run ads in there. By using augmented reality in a printed media kit, you can obviously take advantage of the opportunity to, to present that technology to them, and they're going to recognize it as a, a value opportunity for them as well. Uh, we have another client, or other clients, I should say, that look for sponsorships and then run a campaign around that entire sponsorship piece. So it doesn't have to be, you know, an all-in uh, situation. You could isolate something and, and create it that way. I think direct mail can lend itself very well to augmented reality. It's still one of the, the, the high, most highly <laughs> distributed uh, pieces. It probably props up the U.S. Postal Service, that in magazines. Um, but direct mail, we, we do a fair amount of direct mail here and have a lot of interest in using the opportunity, let's say, for an example, uh, insurance companies where you want to, you know, sign up and register or whatever the, the promotional piece is for, you can act on that immediately with that direct mail piece using augmented reality. Obviously, catalog and retail, the buy now button is really what it's all about. If somebody sees something they like and they have the opportunity right then and there to, to uh, acquire it, then there's a good chance they're going to do that. So we spoke briefly, and Martin mentioned, you know, uh, how, sim how simple it is uh, that uh, the newspaper company did not need to hire anybody to do this. So I think I would 
agree with that to a very high degree. Simple applications can be managed by most production resources that you have in place today. Uh, one of the reasons that we opted to go with uh, Layer was one was their market penetration and their experience uh, at the time looking at the different technologies that were out there. It was a very simple approach, yet powerful. Uh, it's extraordinarily cost effective to, to uh, implement and they're a very flexible partner. Um, so doing video, sli video and slideshows and direct URL linking, these are things that I feel most publishers could, could manage on their own uh, very simply. We also can manage it for you as a service agency, but um, that really depends on, on the internal resources and what, what it is that you're looking for at the end of the day. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, when we get into more compelling interactions in what I like to refer to as integrated augmented reality with print images requires a bit more resource. You're looking at uh, potential high-end videography, storyboarding, green screen shooting, uh, scripting, editing, you know, thinking through all the things. How do I want to take this page and make it come to life using the augmented reality tool? So I think HTML, HTML5 coding uh, also becomes important. Uh, Martin mentioned that as well, uh, that if you can code in HTML5, you can pretty much, it's a blank canvas. You can really put in there what you, what you imagine you want. And again, the key is these are readers that are enjoying your content today in print. All you're doing is giving them more, for, more value for, for their dollar. Um, and I strongly urge using this in the editorial content and principally because you want to enhance that. Give, that's what they're coming to your magazine for in the first place. Otherwise, all your pages would be ads. Um, so I'm an advocate of introducing the technology in the editorial content, getting the usership to start to adopt it, and then really take advantage of what you can do with that. Now, I have a series of questions. Obviously, I, what I didn't do is want to interrupt you, Alan. You were on a roll here. But let me, let me ask you, first of all, uh, one of the key questions I got is, is there a way of tracking the results of who and how many people scan um, an image um, or an advertisement in one of your publications? Yes, there's a full analytics back end running. It's proprietary. You can also export that information out of the portal and bring that into whatever, if you have an enterprise system to, to manage your, your analytics. Now, you, do you do, the next question I have is, do you do a lot of design and programming services for your client base? Um, one of the principal objectives for us is to be able to do that when it's needed. So the short answer would be yes. Okay, and then the next question is, how do you and what are your recommendations for the best ways to make readers aware, whether it's an editorial piece or it's an advertisement, that uh, augmented reality is being used on the print piece that they're reading? How do you do that? Um, I think number one is it would be to put something in the front of the magazine, and I know it's high-value real estate, but put a page in there that explains it so that it's very apparent to the reader when they get it. You can market it through your website if you have e-newsletters, uh, if you do direct mail. Any of those channels are viable to explain and highlight what it is you're doing. And then obviously when you have uh, augmented reality interactions in your content, uh, in your ads, you put calls to action there so they recognize it. It's a good yeah. practice to make sure that you use this, a similar icon or something that makes it very easy for the user to understand, okay, there's something here to, to scan. Now, the next question for you is, so you've made this investment in obviously programming and, and getting augmented reality as part of the, the printed piece. How long do you typically work with clients to keep those ads live um, so if I've got a magazine that's a month old or two months old, um, how long do you keep the, the links live for an augmented reality uh, piece? How long can you keep them live? Well, of course, we probably could keep them alive forever, um, being a, a, a loose terminology. But uh, typically, we will keep them up for 13 months 
or more importantly, at the publisher's discretion, because certain information uh, may become outdated and they want it disengaged. Um, in other cases, you know, printed products lay around, people pick them up and take a look at them. If it's still relevant six months from now or a year from now or two years from now, then we'll accommodate whatever time frame makes sense. And then the next question, and, and Martin, I'll direct this to either you, to you and, and Alan, is talk to me for a minute about the um, smartphone and the iPad uh, um, devices. Do I need any special downloads to access augmented reality applications? Well, I'll jump yeah. in, Martin. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, you know, simply on the layer side of things, you download the layer reader app. It's okay. free. It doesn't cost anything, and you can use that brand recognition to highlight your calls to action. Layer also offers the ability to white label uh, a reader app, so if you wanted to brand your own, you could do it that way. But the only thing required really is to download a reader, very much like a QR code except in these cases they're proprietary to the platform where QR code readers are fairly generic. You can buy, download one and read any QR code anywhere. Uh, if you're running on a layer platform, you're going to need a layer reader. If you're running on uh, actable in, augmented reality from Quad, then you're going to want to, uh, you'll need to download their reader. Okay. Great. And maybe to add to that, uh, if the magazine or, or, or brand or whatever already has an application out there that is downloaded, then they can just use an SDK, which basically is a bundle of software, in my case, of course, with the layer capability that they can add to their existing app. And they just, within the, the interface face that they have, they can then add and tell people just use your existing app, update it, and then scan the space. Now, the next question I've got is, and, and I'll do it two ways. I'll ask Martin, and then I'd like just a couple of examples maybe from Alan. But can you update the con content, for instance, change a video to a new video based on the markers that you've got on this specific page? Yes, you can. Uh, it's actually uh, with Layer. It's unlimited edits, also unlimited usage, as well as unlimited content on a page. It's all for the same price. So imagine for Christmas, you can do 13 days of Christmas. And every day I have a different cover and a different offer on there. Okay. Now, the next question I've got, and I'll direct this to you, Martin, is um, what does all this cost? How do uh, I get a price? And then, and then how do I get a pricing structure? Somebody asked, but what is the expense associated with it? And how can somebody get access to a pricing structure? Yeah, so the layer base costs when you want to create, you make your business card interactive. After the show, you go to layer.com, log in there, or create an account, log in, upload a photo or a scan of your business card, drag and drop the content on there, like a link to your company or your a call me now button, press save, press publish. When you press publish, you will be prompted to pay $20 with, uh, through PayPal with your credit card. Uh, when you do that, then you're live. So it starts at $20 per page. Uh, we also sell pages in bundles. So for instance, in, uh, for 100 pages, you pay $12.99 a page. And that is it. Uh, if you use a free layer app, you just need to pay for the interactive pages. And like I said, they start for $20 a page. That's the investment. OK. Great. Um, now, the next, the next question that I have, and I'm trying to keep up with them. They're coming in rapidly here, is um, when, when you take a look at the, um, the um, actual uh, layer applications or I'll say augmented real reality in general, are you seeing it used for out-of-home advertising? Uh, out-of-home meaning billboards, I take Bill it. Yes, Yeah, billboard do. signage, transit shelters. Uh, yeah, for instance, just now, uh, the new Dan Brown in Holland in Amsterdam, which is uh, where I'm from personally also, they used a billboard where you can download the first chapter, listen to, I think it was music from, I don't know what they did, but they did a great job, the marketeers. I think out of home definitely is cool, but remember, your people are outside. They're not always comfortable to do something new, as well as have a connection. So therefore, I think... It is really cool to do, but it's really a one-time experience, so that you need to make it worthwhile. The best usage, again, is print at home, 
but out of home, basically every surface out there in the world that is recognizable by the computer, meaning it is rich and visual, can be used for interactive experiences. Okay. Now, one of the questions I got, and I'll just do a quick response on this one, is um, one of the folks asked, what other tools besides Layer are out there? There's a number of different augmented reality applications out there. One is called, uh, that I'm familiar with, and, and I'm sure Martin's familiar with all of them because he tracks mm-hmm. them, but one of them would be Mateo, M-E-T-A-I-O. Another one would be an application tool set called Total Immersion. Um, and then there's another one called Blipper. So those are just a couple of examples of tools that are out there today um, and I think Martin did a good job of explaining um, the fact that they've got a very good market share and market presence. Um, the next piece is um, is that I'm, I'm I've got a couple questions that came in twice, and I want to make sure I, I get at these. And I don't under I'm going to be honest. This is a question that I'm not certain that I understand, and I'm going to direct this to Martin. And Martin, if you don't understand it. You can just say I don't understand it, but how do you prevent an image of the magazine from being stolen or hijacked by a competing magazine? Um, this is where your own app comes in. So say you are, uh, say I have Martin Magazine. So Martin Magazine, of course, has the Martin app. In this Martin app, I will use uh, the, the layer SDK to make my pages interactive, apart from doing all kinds of other things. So I instruct my readers to scan my pages using the Martin app, and they don't even know that there's a layer technology under it. So the people will just view and make uh, uh, view the extra content using my app, and they won't use any other app and see any content that may be, be enhanced by others. So therefore, your content is protected. On another side, so this is more of a usage experience protection. On the other side, of course, uh, say somebody hijacks the Martin cover and I find out about it, I have the right to that. So I can say I, uh, I'm not affiliated with Layer. I could call that Layer and say, hey, somebody stole my cover. That's not allowed. They do not have a right to do that. And then there's a notice and takedown uh, procedure that will happen right away. So therefore, all in the legal sense, people are protected. Um, and this is, I think, this is indeed a part of the future. It hasn't happened as of yet. And on and, and one hand, I think, yeah, I don't know why, uh, but of course it's logical uh, that, that that will happen. One of the examples, actually, Bart, that you showed in the beginning was an image of the invasion of MoMA where people place 3D objects in augmented reality in the MoMA museum uh, without them knowing about it, and then they opened that extra show. MoMA embraced that, and they loved it, actually, but it is something of augmented reality is that now space can be enhanced by anybody. Okay. and and. I'm going to direct this to Alan. Alan, when you look at the adoption rate of augmented reality, and by the way, somebody made a comment only 56% of the people are aware of it. That's a pretty high number given the fact that it's an emerging technology. But how do you overcome the issue of adoption of the apps and get people to really use augmented reality? And I'll direct that to Alan and get his thoughts. Um, as I was saying, I think uh, the marketing of the of what you're up to is the key. And you know, I'll use the analogy of 2D barcodes because, quite frankly, uh, I think we did a terrible job uh, taking advantage of 2D barcodes when they first came out. Uh, people would be throwing these codes on, but you know, people were quite literally just taking pictures of them with their phone cameras and wondering why it didn't work. Um, and when that happens. You know, they don't come back and they don't do it again. So when I spoke about uh, putting clear instructions in the front of the publication, being very straightforward with what's required, how it works, and what you're doing is the key. Using whatever publication channels are available to your constituency is key and making it very clear and concise. Um, there's a best practices guide from Layer that gets into some more detail about that. Um, that I'd be happy to share with anyone that's Okay. Well, on thank today. you. Well, I'm going to just wrap up with one or two slides. And um, basically, what I think you're seeing, and I want to thank, by the way, Martin and Alan for doing a fabulous job, but you're seeing the continued rise in ownership of smartphones and tablets. And clearly, consumers are migrating from laptops and PCs to these smartphones and tablets. And what that ha- what, when that happens, what it does is it makes the interplay between mobile and print absolutely essential. And our view at InfoTrends 
And I think the market view is that augmented reality is really one of those next big things among publishers and marketers that want to interact with consumers. And quite honestly, consumers are looking for marketers not just to give them information, but to engage them in, an, in a real experience. And so if you're looking for ways to help your customers cut through the clutter, our view is augmented reality is one of those emerging technologies that's going to transform a piece of paper into a customer experience. And so the bottom line, I think, is that augmented reality is really that link between the physical and the digital world. Now, I would like to thank our presenters as well as all of you for joining us. Hopefully, you got as much out of today's webinar as, as I did. Um, what we would appreciate is your feedback, and um, we'd appreciate if you take a moment to fill out our survey. Thanks to everybody. Thanks especially to our presenters, and have a great day.